recording now as well, so we're live. This is episode eight of Circa Craft, and I've got my good buddy Aaron Gonzalez with me with from Corvo Coffee and Fang Bros. Yeah, yeah. What's buddy? going on? I fucking love. I fucking I love the name for both of them. Really, I like Corvo Coffee, but I like Fang Bros. That's what caught my attention. <laughs> we'll, we'll touch. We'll, we'll touch back on it in a minute. We'll touch back on it. Right. Um, I'll give a little quick breakdown of his stuff. So first one is Corvo Coffee is a provider of ground or whole beans coffee. Uh, flavors from their house roast, go fast, loaked out, the remedy, which first of all, I love the names. I love the styling, like nice aesthetic looks, designs to them. Just a just Thank you, thank you. you know, it, just, it just has a like cool West Coast vibe. And, you know, granted I'm East Coast, but regardless, it just has a, just a nice, nice design. It's, it's, it's definitely appealing, you know, it's really cool. So it's really eye-catching. Um, so yeah, as well as Corvo Coffee, um, we, he also has Fang Bros, which for those for the for the uneducated <laughs> to play on play on name or it's like at least that's what i would think uh bang bros don't don't google it on your work computer bro um, <laughs> which is his business for radios um programming uh accessories and custom and design works paintings for baofeng radios which he's a reseller authorized registered reseller and does all that work for there which was kind of what piqued my interest the first time because it's been something that I've been really interested in, and it seems like it's really kind of blown up a lot recently as well. Definitely. So, but um, before we start getting into everything, um, how's the weather, man? I know the weather is a lot better there than it is fucking. It's here. good, man. It's sunny out here. You know, you can play awesome. some frisbee, frisbee golf. You know, you can get at it. It's beautiful out here. Hell yeah! Nice man. sunny I'm weather jealous. out here. It's a little California. Yep, mad jealous. All right, so before we get into it, um, we'll just do a quick little lightning round, which is just goofy, silly questions, and we'll just roll on it from there. You know, answer whatever you want. We're just we're just having fun, loosen it up and stuff. So, uh, first question is, what is your favorite American muscle car? Probably Mustang. You know, as a child, I always wanted a Mustang. I think I'm probably still going to get one in the next ten years of my life for sure. Honestly, a little weekend car. Very good. Yeah, I was about to say that's. I'm I'm the same I'm the same way. Uh, growing up, favorite car was a Mustang, and I think my favorite. They're so fly. Model, they are, man. They are like, like the classics are always nice too. But my favorite was like the 2001, 2004 Terminator Cobras. There right was on. something about those cars that were just so badass, and uh, you know they'd be supercharged from the factory, and they were just slick, and they still use them a good bit for drag racing too. Yeah, I have a WRX right now. Um, I don't know why I don't have a Mustang. I've always wanted one. But uh, I know I got in a car accident in a Mustang, and that thing barely even did any damage compared to the other the other car. Destroyed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think it was like, probably, I'll probably look like, like 65, 66. Am I tripping? Hell, yeah. yeah. yeah I think it was back then. It was a nice. Hell, yeah. Get a favorite color? Uh, You know what, man? I'll probably go with a nice cream white. I was about to say it's either it's either a nice cream white or it's like a cherry red. Those are pr- really the top two. Or if you get like one of the OG um, kind of OG greens, like that that the uh, I'm trying to think of the mock mock green color, which is really cool too, or mock blue. But um, we'll move on. So uh, next question is this this one's always fun because I always like hearing people's opinion. But uh, have you ever had a supernatural experience? Oh man, dude, paranormal is the shit. I, we me and my friends and family we mess around. We go in the mines and try to record, try to find the evidence of, of ghosts and stuff like that. But yeah, I definitely that's, am a believer, hundred percent. So man, I love that. See, I'm I'm right up there with you. I, it's like one of those things where where ter- I think as a child it really terrified me, and I didn't want to admit that I enjoyed some of that. But you know, Word, it's like one of those things, and you, know, you like look away, and you like put your eye around, and like oh, I don't want to watch, and then you watch it anyways, or going somewhere, you you know, mm-hmm. you know it kind of freaks you out, but you don't want to do it, any- but you do it anyways. But that's really cool. The mind. Um, so you've been to like some of the Mayan temples and stuff like that, trying to get. No, no, like we know, like uh, mines, like uh, I don't know, like gold oh, mines, oh, all the little oh, mining. My no, I wish, man. I'll be, I'll be badass called the Mayan. Yeah, I, like I was about to say, I was about to say, that's, that's, that's fucking awesome if you've been to this of the mines. <laughs> nah, man, this is like just that. desert fucking Mojave, gotcha. California shit. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but that's that's still really cool, though. That's awesome. Uh, have you ever gotten any, like, any kind of hits or any kind of responses? Um, I mean, we only did a few times, but yeah, we actually, um, we heard some old dudes say horse in the background, which was random, but oh, we, we captured it. 
get fucking goosebumps thinking about it. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was like horse. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> D- dope. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I ain't, got, I ain't got no horses here, man. So, yeah, not <laughs> me neither. Saddle up, saddle up, bro. Weird. Um, so, next question. Um, again, one of those funny, funny. You know, what is your thoughts on clowns? Like, I feel like people either absolutely fucking hate clowns or clowns are like clowns are cool. I mean, um, I watched the movie fucking. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Attack of the space. Killer Clowns from Outer Attack Space. That, that movie. <laughs> that movie was was trippy when I was a kid. I'm 31. So that movie was a trip when I was a kid. So clowns, they're cool. I, I don't. I'd rather like not be in that area of the clown, but. I mean, if it's for like a little kid show and shit, it'll be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's all just jokes too. I'm right there with you, though. I think I'm I'm a little younger than you, but pretty much the same. I think growing up, I hate. Yeah, them. no, they're cool. And I think like in California, like was it a couple years ago? They had this thing where clowns were just popping up. God, yeah, man, I remember that. That's cr- <laughs> that shows badass. It's, like, it's surreal. Like past five years have been fucking insane if you think about it. Yeah, easier times too back in the day, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so. With you being in the coffee business, um, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna say, what is, your, what, in your opinion, what is the worst fast food coffee that that people generally buy or purchase? <laughs> you know what, man? Um, I, I, I was raised low income, so you know, paying a dollar for McDonald's coffee—that's like that's the way to go, man. Save, saving you money and getting some coffee for a dollar. The worst coffee, I mean, just because we we roast local and everybody always kind of like compares us to the typical Starbucks and stuff like that. But I mean, it's all the same, you know, yeah. McDonald's is dope. Cause it's a dollar. But when we roast coffee, like people ask like, what's the difference? You know, I'm like, there's really no difference. It's coffee. It's coffee. We are roasting it live and you know, in front of you, sure. you know, you get to smell it and just kind of like the whole experience of the, the timing of it, the drying of the bean. And mm-hmm. that's just what like the, the exciting part of it really is just being there and, and ha- having hands on and, because you can go to a grocery store and you'll see a bag of coffee sitting there. You don't really, the date, you don't really don't know when they roasted that thing, you know? And, um, yeah. That's cool. Or or, or I say, we'll say not worse, worse fast food coffee, but we'll say maybe most overrated, most overrated. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It'll just be that one. It would be Starbucks for sure. Cause that's what everybody compares us to like, Hey Dan, what's the difference between you guys? And it's just like, dude, I mean, just get a bag, try it for yourself. And I mean, you're not going to be disappointed, you know, but we're fresh as fuck. And, we get it from, you know, we get it from all these different types of uh, origins, you know, so it's pretty cool, pretty neat. Very cool. And we'll touch back on it when we start getting into the business. And one last question, um, and this will wrap it up, but who is your favorite hip hop artist? Doesn't matter. It can be now, can be old school stuff. And- uh, Riff Raff, for sure. Jody High Roller. Oh, yeah. Really? So so just him yep. commenting. That, dude, that must, is it the first time he's commented on one of your stuff before? No, he, he, he's uh, like in the past, in my personal accounts, he's liked a few. And then he, he, he followed me too on Twitter. Then he unfollowed me. I don't know why. Oh. I was, that was like the worst day ever. But, you know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I really like Riff Raff a lot just for the fact that I remember like when we're, I was younger, uh, my mom used to show me videos of him like freestyling in a car, you know, not really doing much. And then now, you know, he has his mansion and he's doing his thing. And I really like admire the hustle. And that shit, that shit motivated me, to be honest. Like I've always, That's awesome. um, in my, my main job too, I go, I'm a door to door sales rep too. So just having that hustle and that, that fire just kind of like, I, I appreciate that shit. Damn dude. So, so you technically have, so how many businesses or how many different things are you, are you involved? Okay. In so, so um, the, the Corva coffee, uh, I'm doing business with my brother. So okay. yeah, so we're doing that together. And then the Fang bros, that's just me. Um, but then I, I work for a cable company out here and, uh, as a door to door sales rep. So that's, I got to keep that hustle alive and I'm just motivated, you know, I feel that man. Got to get that bread. Got to collect. Um, that's cool, man. Like I, I'm kind of the same with Riff Raff. It's like one of those things I think growing up, um, the song that the song that popped to me was the, of course the tiptoe and the Jordans. And you know, that was like the first song. And then from there I started going through his songs. He's kind of, and it may be just because it's East coast versus West coast, but he's underappreciated, at least where I'm at. Like, I feel like people don't give him enough credit because he actually has some pretty good songs, pretty good beats. And yeah, man, you're right, man. But you're right. The dude does not stop grinding. Uh, I mean, like he's involved like, in all sorts of shit from like freaking getting involved with like gaming, gaming pre-workout like uh, G Fuel. Yeah, G Fuel. Uh, he's doing that thing right now. Yeah. Uh, he's been involved in some Twitch, some of the big Twitch streamers. Him and you know they've you know kind of like connected and collaborated at times. It, he's just he's just he's just everywhere, dude. He's just 
you, like you said, the guy just does not stop grinding, even though he's and back, then, he just keeps going. Yeah, and that's one of the things too. But like when I started uh, painting these Bale things, I, it was just a, a, a first off. I mean, it was just like like his the way he like uh you know his his details you know and, and and how he describes colors is just insane. And I try to just kind of like piggyback off off that in my own little form and just kind of like if I'm if I'm listening to a song you know and it makes me want to paint this color or something you know I'll, I'll throw in a lyric or something and just you know have fun with that dude that's awesome man so that's that's really cool that you just you know not only does you know you look up to him but he's just a good inspiration for your work actual work and then your actual work grind and flow but yeah man i me and my buddies were, were we joke around and we would talk about like he was like yeah i got the fucking aqua berry uh aqua berry you know such and such or <laughs> yeah it's just ridiculous I know. it's awesome I, it, I, I just i kind of like almost wonder what he does sometimes during the day if he just fucking sits there sometimes and just pops his shit pops in his mind or if it's just natural and just rolls off just his kicking mind. back yep <laughs> what is what is what is dogs yeah what is dogs um i can't uh jody high rolling um that's awesome dude so now that we've wrapped that up, let's go ahead and get into let's get into your stuff. So, and I'll give you the option: would you prefer to talk about Corvo first, or would you prefer Fang Bros? Um, we can we, we can we can uh, talk about Fang Bros. Let's go ahead, you know, talk okay. about some radio teams. Hell yeah! Okay, so for me, and just just going off of it, radios is something that's almost been it's not difficult for me, but it's been. It's almost makes me kind of nervous sometimes getting involved in it because I'm trying to figure out what I need, what to do. Uh, like one thing was I had to have it programmed, et cetera. And I feel like sometimes that can be slightly intimidating some people. That being said, they've just been blowing up recently. Uh, very, very, you know, everyone wants to get one or a lot of people, at least in my, in my view, I see a lot of people who want to get one, get involved, or they already have one. So that being said, Fang Bros is definitely one of the bigger names I've seen, at least personally. Um, Thanks, man. See, What's the inspiration for the name Fang Bros? And I already know the answer, but but shoot it out. Okay, so okay, so um, I'm not gonna name any names as of yet, but you know, um, I have somebody in my life that's uh, pretty. He's doing. He's grinding on social media too, and you know, um, when the quarantine hit, you know, we're just the, the downtime, and you're just kind of sitting there. You know, you, the yard work's done, all your responsibilities are taken care of, and you're just there, and just like, man, I'm going fucking ape shit crazy. You gotta do some something. And um, just hearing about like his success and his, his, him grinding on the side, and it's like, dude, that's fucking dope. And I gotta do something myself, you know. And it's like, let's let's let me fucking think of something. And it's just like, um, I remember, you know, I go shooting all the time with. Well, I used to go shooting all the time with my boys, and um, I, I remember one of them carrying a bail thing, and they just chopped it up. They're like, yo, it's it's cheap ass radio, man, and you could hear what's going on, and it's kind of cool. And I go, I just have it in my bag, and just have it with me when I go shooting, just so. You know, if I know anything is going down near me, I could, you know, and I was like, all right, you know, so uh, we had a radio just laying there and then I just thought of something. I was like, man, I should just, because I used to, we used to do graph when I was younger, um, street graffiti and just, you know, the hit ups and the bombing on the trains and just all that fucking dope shit. And I was like, dude, I can, I could just paint some radios on some stupid shit and like, just to see, you know, like see who likes it. I know a lot of my friends would probably like the color schemes and they'll probably support me. And, um, I mean, just just went that route and Fang Bros. Just I just thought about like what kind of name it, you know, like what's a what's a, like a cheesy name that like would catch something and then, you know I'm a perv so I like you know big booty girls you know you know all that all that porno shit and uh, I was just like let's just do fucking I was like Fang Bros. Bayo Fang Fang Bros. I was like dude I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking just do Fang Bros. Like that's on some pervert shit so like at least people have a sense of humor like if they're adding it they already kind of know like. It's not on some fucking office professional shit, you know? Like, they'll be saying sure. some fucking funny, fun stuff, you know? And that's pretty much the basic of that. Like, it wasn't nothing too, but I was kind of excited when I when I thought about that. I was like, oh, man, you know, that's kind of kind of catchy and it kind of works. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, have you, so that, that being, so when did you launch this business actually this year too? Yeah, I want to say it was about like like, yeah. like three months ago, about two or three months wow. ago. Like, I just started, I just started doing it and, and it was random because, like I said, I just started like at first, you know, I was never big on radios my whole life. Like I remember I had this, uh, I don't know if you remember these old WWF walkie talkies. It was like, it was stone cold and cane. That's the set I had. And you just let you raise up the, the, the wrestler's arm. And that was like a walkie talkie. And that was like probably the coolest walkie talkie I ever had. 
until I started getting into these bail things. But um, I was never like big on like, you know, radios and the frequencies and, you know, stuff like that. I just, I just kind of just went on this brand new, man. So I, at first I wanted just to like make it like an informative kind of Instagram so people can kind of like learn. But then I kind of like just started posting pictures of my paint jobs because it just, I just, I got when it, I don't know, like when my close people started liking it and then they started wanting to buy it, and then um, people started sharing my IG and then a lot of people started hitting, man. And I'm really grateful for that shit. And it's been super fun, man. And it's just, it's just awesome. wicked. Like, I don't know. I'm blessed. I'm happy. It's cool because I could put my, my crazy imagination to, on, onto paint on these radios, man. And it's fun. Definitely fun. That's awesome, man. So, like you said, with the virus and everything going around, I, I had no idea that you you had just started. I thought, honestly, I thought it was had been around that a little bit longer than that. Nah, man, this is just like my, my first post was like what back in uh, April twenty fifth. Damn, damn, and that was like new to the game, man. Like that, that's just out of nowhere, just starting it. And I'm learning as I go, as I go, man. Like people, like all these like high and like high end tactical people, you know, they, they hit me up, and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna be straight up with you, dude. Like I don't know these scientific. <laughs> The doctor questions you're asking me because this shit is still new to me, but I could learn together with you, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least, so like one thing is, it seems like not only is it something that you kind of just attach to and then try it out, but it's almost, you're still passionate about it. So you, it's nothing that you're just going to do, stop and go. You're just, you're just full running it, man. You're just learning it and just, just fucking doing it. That's what Yeah. Doing. Yeah, man. If I could, if I could just keep this, keep this up and, and build a, a, a you know, I would honestly, I wouldn't mind doing this this shit full time because it's fun. You know, it's yeah. fun. First and foremost, it's fun. It's just exciting. The paint is just when you know when you're just walking around, you have paint on your hands and your clothes, and people are like, "Dude, that that paint looks kind of cool." And you're like, "Oh shit, that kind of does." You know, and I start thinking about little ideas and stuff. And I don't know. I I, I just think it's fun, and I wouldn't mind doing it full time. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I was gonna say, so like you said with the paint jobs and like the inspiration behind that. That's something that I also noticed and I thought was really cool was one, it's not your typical, uh, this is in tan, OD green, multi-cam, like your typical camouflage patterns or typical spray jobs. <laughs> but it's it's like it's like everything. Like, you know, it's just like cool shit, you know, like high, like, you know, highlight colors, you know, really good pop colors that pop and blend together and like, you know, some of that um the, you know, new wave colors schemes and like old waves color schemes. It's just all blend together. So it's not like the generic stuff. Like you said, it's like, it's, it's different. It's unique. And <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Cause like you, say, you enjoy it. Yeah, it's funny. Cause I remember like, just like when I first started doing this and I was top, top, uh, chopping up with my pops and I was just like, yeah, man, I'm gonna start painting these radios. And he's like, Oh man, and he gets all excited and shit. His legs start moving and shaking. And he's like, dude, you should start, you know, he's just throwing these ideas at me, non fucking stop. And I just started like chipping out, like, some of them were actually pretty good, you know? Yeah, that's awesome, man. That is that is that's really cool. I, I like how you've put your own spin on it, too. So I mean, not only do you sell it, but you're you're painting them there because I know some people will, will paint them. You know, they'll, they'll send them off to get painted or they'll get like a finish put on them. But you're, do, you're doing it. It's all home brew right, right, in, you know, right in shop, man. That's awesome. Yeah, right, right, right outside, man. Right outside, like in my back patio, actually. Got a little setup oh, yeah. right there, a little workshop. So with um, being a, a registered vendor and stuff like that, like how, how do you go about learning about getting them programmed and stuff like that? Is there, I you, actually, um, yeah, I actually just YouTube everything, man. You know, yeah. you, YouTube champion. I just, I was on it. I kind of, <laughs> I learned myself, you know, I had an old windows XP. Um, sure. and I, this is old. This is probably like a 10 year old Dell. And I downloaded chirp as the program to, um, program these radios. And, uh, you know, Windows was cool for a while. And then I was like, I'm going to go back to my Mac because Mac is just lightning fast. And yeah. as many as, you know, radios I have to do, this is just not the time. The time wasn't there on the Windows. So, and it's an old computer yeah. too. So, yeah. And I won't get into, into details on how it's done and stuff like that. Cause I oh, it's basic, way. man. It's super easy. There's yeah. no, I'm not the kind of person that's like secretive of anything. I'm like an open book, man. There's not, nothing is original. You know, I'll, there's so many people in this ham world where it's like, you know, there's no, there's no secret about it. It's straightforward. Just chirp. <laughs> I got you, man. I was just trying to keep it. So just in case that there was some kind of step that you do. So. Oh yeah. A little secret, little stuff. secret remedy. I can't tell you who's. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that being said, um, 
with the, with the virus and everything that's hit. And like you said, you got stuck at home and everyone's out buying stuff right now. A lot of the stuff in the firearm industry is like fire sale. It's like gone. Like it's, it's just either out of stock or price gouging. Same thing with a lot of stuff like PC parts, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Has like the radio market been hit really, really hard? Cause I mean, I mean, you seem like you have a, a nice stock where it's not completely obliterated but has it been hard to get parts and stuff like that that you need? Yeah, so, yeah, so when I first started this, um, I was trying to buy like five radios at a time. And then these things were coming out to be like 35, 30 bucks, like shipping, yeah. shipping, handling. And then I don't know. I want to say after like my first like 10 to 20 radios that I, that I painted, no, actually probably like probably 20 to 30 radios I painted. Um, this company reached out to me and they're like, yo, you know, we love what you're doing with this radio scene. And, um, you know, we want to get your back. We want to, you know, sponsor you if that's something you might want to look into. And you know, at, for me at the end of the day, it was like, hell yeah, because I'm, I'm spending a lot more money and I'm not really making that much money on these things. Like what, like 20, 25 bucks, 30 bucks. Right. Yeah. So with, with, uh, Merck hit radio when they hit me up and they're like, yo, you know, we really dig what you're doing. You know, we can give you a, a dope price and m make sure everybody's happy. And I took advantage of it, man. And I just went, you know, I just grabbed the bulls by the horn and just, they, they're awesome, man. They shit me plenty of radios you know i want i want to i want to take a picture of me just laying on a bunch of like hundreds of radios you know <laughs> just doing it like one of those like yeah, stupid ass pictures man but I, I don't know but yeah they take care of me definitely in the in the in the equipment side of it that's really cool man that being said if that's what you should do man you should do a nice little picture and like get them to send you a bat like a big batch and get like in a bathtub and like <laughs> Just butt ass naked, just sitting in the bathtub. In the yeah, with a just, yeah, with a cowboy hat or something silly. Hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> and just have and just have like one radio talking in one, in one ear, and then just be, you know just be filled, and, you know, just be fucking. Dude, that's, be, I want to do that now. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, man, that's awesome. If I could be the inspiration for that at least, then that's it, man. Go do it. Oh man, that's fucking dope. Very cool, very cool. So, for people who are maybe interested in radios or they're considering one, what are what are your in your opinion the must have accessories that you need to have with these? Because this kind of implies to me too, because I'm pretty new to them. Yeah, so I mean, so usually when you buy a bail thing um, from wherever you buy it from, it's going to come with a, already a charger. You know, it's going to come with a little lanyard, a little antenna, basic. So that's pretty much what you need. Um, you're probably going to want to get a longer antenna, just so you know. Obviously, sure. the, the longer range is, is that's where it's at. Um, but you know, I'm not going to lie to anybody. I'm not one of those tactical dudes that like, you know, with a rifle and I'm running around, you know, long, you know, with the whole get up. And uh, I mean, it'd be cool to have that. I just don't have it. But I, I, I pretty much just use it when I go hiking and my boys are on that side of the area. And like, you know, we're within a three mile radius, you know, and it's pretty, it's pretty legit. And um, I know like the UV five R, the bail things, those models are like super popular. And I, I just think like in the tactical side and, Everywhere is just everybody needs to have that on them, like in their backpack or something. It's just important to have. It. And yeah, the UV five R's is where it's at. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, even tactical or not tactical. I mean, I think even in today's today's age, uh, I mean, especially like where I'm at, like with natural disasters, with hurricanes, and then where, where you're at, where you're at, like you know, whether it be, I'll be honest, I know like earthquakes is a big issue, like in, in oh California fuck yeah and stuff like that you know, or someone being lost or forest fired or, you know, just any emergency, fires. man, any emergency. it's real out there. It's real. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's nice to have something else because I mean, I think everyone likes to rely on their cell phones nowadays. Oh yeah. The parents are key. Yeah. Cell phones is key, man. It's everybody relies on myself. I rely on, you know, I'm one of those dudes where I'd be lost without the map. You know, I need that map <laughs> yeah. on my cell phone. Yeah. But I was just going to say, it's like, it's nice to have that supplemental equipment. And at the same time, it's not even that expensive either. So it's not like you're having to invest $400 in like a radio nah, to, man, to do yeah. this. You know, you're getting, you're getting a pretty quality product. Biofang is, is the, is the radio to have really for the most, as far as I know, that's the only name that I really see very often. Yeah. There's a lot of other little companies out there, but you, I mean, why spend a lot of money for something that if you're not, if it's not going to be that, you know, if it's not that important. You want something that's that's durable, li liable, affordable. Bail things where it's at, but you can also spend like a lot more money on like a Motorola or some type like that. You know? Sure. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And it seems like the accessory market for bail thing is there though. So it's it's, it's oh yeah pretty heavily. Oh everyone's yeah. Got, everyone's rocking these things. So that's really cool, man. That's really cool. So with that being said, with like the radios and stuff like that, I think you mentioned it and you may have said that. So you said it has about a three mile radius, give or take for people. Who don't I mean, that's what it says. Um, yeah. Honestly, like to be honest with you guys, 
get a longer, get a bigger antenna, get a longer antenna. Sure. Cause I mean, I, I, every time I get a radio, a new radio and I'm always trying to try it out. It's always about a, a mile or two, you know, sure. nothing That's more than that. Much. You get lucky. Yeah. I guess it depends on your geographic area too. So like, if yeah, you we're in the city, in so, a hole, so yeah, or a city, et cetera. Cool. And it's so, cool too, um, because like, um, I noticed a lot, a lot of like people that are buying radios for me, they don't live in like they don't live in in Southern California, so they live in places oh. where it's just like lands of just like greenery and like it's just probably com- more convenient on that side, you know. Yeah, that's absolutely, and that's kind of like where I'm at. It's it's mostly you know I kind of live a little, it's a little more rural than it is city, but I'm closer to the city. But it's still cool just for you know like you said, if I want to go hiking or if I'm going, you know, I'm not sure. I'm I'm close enough to where anyone else. I could be in communication with somebody and having a radio with a three mile radius is, is pretty solid. But, you know, like you said, natural disasters, uh, we get hurricanes pretty frequently, like every fucking year. It's, it's awful. That's probably the worst thing about the weather, like with humidity and then the hurricanes, of course. And then we get tornadoes occasionally as well. Damn. So, I mean, it's just, so it's real. Yeah. It, gets, it gets real out there then, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, man. A little bit. Damn. Tornadoes is no joke, man. I remember watch, yeah. watching that movie Twister when I was younger. That movie scared <laughs> the shit out of me, for man. Sure. For sure. It's not as bad as like the Midwest, but we get them occasionally. We get some bad storms, man. But um, but yeah, that's really cool. I mean, they're, they're just, I feel like it's just almost an essential thing that I think a lot of people should, should have if you just want to be at least updated on what's going on or even around you. So... Yeah, it's, but, um, yeah you, you can chime in on, you know, fire department, police, you know, you have to have a, a you know, you have to have your ham license to, to, to talk, obviously, but um, it's, right. you, you don't have to have a license to, to listen, you know, it's all public ac- access. And that's what I was going to say. That was my next question was like with legality. Um, I know that there's a certain license you have to have. So the hand, you have to have your ham license, which from what I've heard, it's not, it's not too difficult to get if you really want. Nah, to. man, it's, it's fun. Easy. Everybody needs to get it. Yeah. Yeah. What's, um. And I've heard horror stories and rumors of like of guys tracking down signals if you don't have your license and you're distributing like a if you're calling out and frequency and getting on the frequencies and stuff. Is that true or is that just kind of like? Hey man, I, I hear I hear funny things like that all the time. I, I don't make me worried at all. I, I have other things to worry about. I, I don't even know if that's even real. Um, I know in today's age you could definitely track it down. I see some cool technology that I definitely want to learn how to do all that too. That's that's badass, you know. But yeah. I don't think anybody needs to be worried about. It. A damn thing really you know yeah it's all absolutely. fun just respect the rules obviously you have to have your license to transmit and stuff like that but to listen and to have you know have your own little radios for the family and your friends you know you're good man good stuff good stuff and so with um you you did mention the antennas we were discussing that what's um what's your go-to brand well now antenna? it's this market i mean market is yeah. they got my back so market is what i'm gonna be repping um gotcha I mean, these antennas are, are pretty bitching, man. Um, I think they're was at nine nine inches when it's not folded, and then when it's up, it's like eighteen. So I have one right now by Aubrey too. Aubrey was one of my first antennas that I actually bought for my for my radios, and um, they're affordable too, man. They're like twenty some bucks, and uh, I think my thing was like forty eight inches. It's obnoxious, dude. It's just yeah, silly. Yeah, I, you listen to fucking aliens with that thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. I was it's fucking. And then the radio itself is like a bar, bar of soap, you know? So, you know? <laughs> That's cool, man. So, um, we'll, and I'll get with you and we'll get the links to that. And so we'll post it and link it so everyone knows who to hook up, who to hook up with, uh, with the antennas and stuff. Shit. Cool stuff, man. Very cool. So that being said, obviously business is booming. H- how many radios do you generally sell just on average a week? Uh, so, okay. So like when it, when it was, like, so when it first started blowing up, like the first month, um, I was getting, like, I had a day where I woke up and I, I checked my phone and I got 12 fucking orders and it's like, what the hell? Like, there's seriously 12 people out there that are excited to buy a radio off me, you know, a painted radio. And then I was like, dude, fucking right on, you know, let's get to work. So, you know, just, um, you know, timing is important. So you have to make time for the family make time for work. Absolutely. You know, so timing is, is big. So I just... You know, no sleep for the wicked. You know, I'm determined and I'm motivated. So I, you know, I've heard people have, you know, when they order radios, you know, they're waiting for a, quite a while. Um, but for me, it stresses me out, man. If you have an order, I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to linger with that order. I want to get it done, knocked out, make sure you're happy and keep it going, you know? Well, that being said, with, with the Fang radios, we'll, we'll wrap it up with Fang radios and um, we'll move into Corvo Coffee. And we'll, we might bounce back in back into them like after everything. 
So with Corvo Coffee, uh, like I said, the aesthetics of it, the looks of it, to me at least, and I feel like to others, it's pretty appealing, has a good, just catch, good name, good brand, just like your radios. So when did you guys, when did you and your brother start Corvo Coffee? Um, so we, we did this about like about three years ago. You know, it was just an idea, um, something that we've kind of always just kind of like shot the shit about, you know, just like, yo, you know, let's get a, just let's start roasting coffee, man. It's like, yeah, that's, that's fucking badass, you know, we should do it one day. And pretty much, man, we're just like, shit, let's do it. And then we, we got a, a little like easy bake oven type of little roaster. And it was like three or 400 bucks. And it, it came with like, I don't know, like 10 different origins of like, of coffee, all like from like, was it Mexico, like Hawaii, Afri- African Burundi, man, there was so many of them in that pack. And we just started roasting and then we probably put it like on so, like Instagram. And this is before we even had like the Corvo Coffee Instagram. And people were just hitting us up, man. Yo, man, let me get a bag. You know, I want to try it. It looks, looks bomb. And to be honest, I felt bad for everybody that like had a, had a, to taste that coffee because, I mean, at that time it was so inconsistent. It was just like, it's funny. I laugh at it now, but that shit must have been <laughs> looking gross ass coffee, dude. <laughs> but um, as we got better, <laughs> we pulled the trigger. We're like, you know, we looked, we were like, we were talking and we're like, dude, you know, we're going to have to step our game up because we're only making like 12 ounces at a time. And that 12 ounces in that little easy bake oven type thing was like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So it was definitely not worth it. So we're like, dude, we got to get a bigger roaster. And it was about like eight grand. And we're like, you know, we, we got, we trust each other enough. Let's do it. And we, and it paid off within a year. So this coffee machine is uh, by Mill City Coffee. Uh, these, these, these guys are awesome, man. They make some really dope, uh, dope machinery and uh, never let us down, man. That's where it's at, Mill City. That's awesome. So, have you always been like a big coffee? coffee oh snob, yeah, coffee snob, yeah. Snob, yeah my my boy, coffee person. Like, yeah, you know? my boy that does a coffee with me. He he likes black coffee, like just straight, no sugar, no nothing, and that shit. It's not for me. Like when I was a kid, I would just kind of like sure. trying to reach over the table and take my grandma's cup of coffee, you know, and she drank it diabetic, you know. She like, like how they say, it, she liked the uh, um, coffee with her sugar, you know, or sugar with her coffee, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be diabetic, so uh, and that's just the way I roll it. Like I, I like it super light, and just it's like part of my morning ritual, man. Absolutely. So with your couple different flavors, they also obviously have a like, nice little style to them, like I was discussing earlier. Is um, obviously there's some inspiration behind them. Kind of go go into detail about those, man. So like, where did you get the ideas from? Or like, yeah, so what's what's the inspiration? yeah? So me and my boy, like I said, we're we're raised in SoCal. You know, we're, we weren't raised with money. We're right. We're raised in the hood. So um, everything is just pretty much just about like not giving a fuck about you know how we operate. Like like let's just put it out there. Like you know, gangster rap is you know what motivates us, and you know being being a hustler, motivated. You know, just trying to get it. And that's just where we kind of come like that, that West coast, like that rap gangster rap kind of vibe. And, you know, everybody is always like super nice and just, you know, like hipster feeling and shit like that. And we're like, nah, dude, like, this is like, let's bring out like, you know, you know, let's, let's do it from the, you know, from the ground up, you know, exactly how, how it's, how it is. And, yeah. and now when we started Corvo, it's just, it's, it's been really cool because I, I learned so much roasting coffee and, and the beauty of it. And before I didn't even consider like the little things that go into coffee. You know, you walk into a liquor store, you're just like, Oh shit, coffee art for sure. I need to stay up. But like, you don't think about like the hands that had to pick those, those, those beans, you know, and stuff like that, you know? Absolutely. That's, that's pretty much exactly what I wanted to hear. That's, that's, that's just so cool, man. Like that again, like, like I said, just the inspiration. And like I said, this, it seems like you guys have just got it nailed. I mean, just like nail on the head on like the design, everything to it. So it's, it is, it's, it's pretty cool. So I will, I will do a little, I'll do a small confession real quick. And some people who know me will already know. I actually do not like coffee. My wife <laughs> loves coffee. My brother loves coffee. It's like just one of those things that I've tried over, over time and I've tried to enjoy it. However, I love the smell of coffee. Sm- the smell of coffee to me is relaxing. Just, huh? It's great. Yeah. As it is, it's very relaxing. It's just a nice smell. Like you go to like so some like similar. There's like smaller grocery stores here, and you can go through some of the aisle, and they have like a coffee aisle, like an actual like a nice coffee aisle, and you get to smell all the roasted beans and stuff like that. I love that. And then I try to taste. Yeah, it I can't drink this shit. Like, oh, shit, I can't. I can't fucking drink this. I feel like maybe it's just I haven't had good coffee. So I'm. I'm I am. I'm. I'm fucking amped up to to try coffee. Try it again. I got. Yeah, man. We got that. We got that coffee shipped out your way already. So. Be expecting it in the next few days um and you got the loped out right 
I think so. I think I got one. I'm, I'm probably not, yeah. I'll probably buy a couple of them just to try them all out. To be honest, just to just to figure out which one I like or try and get something I like because I just I probably have yeah. Just so our our them. house well, our house roast is Guatemalan. Cool. So we try to stick stick it stick to there. Um, and then our loped out, which is pretty cool. That's the one with the easy, easy, easy face on it. Yeah, that's so that cool. one is, yeah. So like on ratio, it's like 80% Guatemalan and 20%, um, the African Burundi. So it's a cool little mix, man. Has a little kick in it. Very cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, we, we're not, then, um, one of my, one of our, our good friends, um, MC remedy, you know, that's, he's, he, he's been our friend since, you know, day one. And he actually loves coffee and we we're talking about it, how, and he kind of like, you know, was mentioning like little things, like little tasty, like, or, you know, the origins, or we just kind of just chopped it up about everything. And we, that's why we, we created this little MC remedy blend. So that's kind of cool for him, you know, and it's, it's just fun for everybody. Hell yeah, man. That's again, like that's, that's just you kind of getting back into your roots and, and distributing something that that's custom handmade again, just making a product that, that fits your lifestyle and, and your style and as a whole, that's again. That's really cool. But yeah, I'm hope I'm excited. I'm I'm excited to try the coffee. I made my uh, went out and bought a ro- uh, I got the whole beans because I felt like that was the way the ground beans. I think that was the way to go. So I got a yeah. They say they say they say it stays fresher when it's whole right. bean, and then you get the kick out of just doing it yourself, and it's awesome. Yep, so, fun, fun times. Yep. So we I went out and ordered one just to make sure to have one. So when it gets here, I'm up, I'm up, I'm gonna try and brew this. <laughs> that's so we're gonna be extra excited now. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna be a whole process for me. So. So, like you did mention, you have the Guatemala beans, some of the African beans. So, like between beans, like what's what's the dif- what's the difference between some of the beans? Like, because I know you said like you have a couple blends and stuff like that. Yeah. So the way it, where where it's grown, um, like the elevation, okay. it, like that, it's just it's all that. Just it's like the whole science to it, man. Like the the the, the mountains, the altitudes, and stuff like that, it just makes sure. the beans more more pricier. Um, something I, I learned too that a lot of people don't didn't know too was like how they say it, like the darker the coffee, the stronger it is. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, like I didn't know that I always thought, dude, if that coffee, coffee is dark as hell, then that shit must be strong. And that's not the case. It's the boldness of the flavor. It's, oh. it's the flavor itself. Um, gotcha. The lighter the coffee, the stronger it is. And it's because the, the, the coffee beans are, they're light roast. The light beans are, they're, they're smaller. Gotcha. The beans are actually really small. They're like twice as small as they're actually a bean from like Guatemala, gotcha. you know? So that's why it's more stronger. Cause it's like, more of a twice a bean you know right right that makes sense uh, yeah, and that makes sense that probably one of those simpler things but like you said uh i would i would i wouldn't know that i'm sure a lot of people don't know that either what's um what's your most favorite what's your favorite bean like what's from like which country or which location part of the world so far man like i said it, ha- it has to be um yeah it has to be los santos from uh it's a little farm out there in guatemala Little finca, that, that, that thing, they, they make some killer beans, man. Like, just like the texture of it after it's roasted, and it's just so, uh, so fulfilling, man. It's, you, you, if you guys can visit a roastery in town where they just roast co- like fresh coffee, just go in there and chop it up. They're usually going to be fucking awesome people and just enjoy the smells, man. Cause, like, you, I, for me personally, like, when I'm roasting coffee, I'm just like, I see it like I'm, you know, I, when I do the drop and the coffee's just, you know, entering the or the drum where it spins and it cools down and you see all the smoke coming out and the, just the aroma is just like I, you forget about everything in life and just like I'm at the moment and you're just like, whoa, man, this is awesome. That's great, man. So with Corvo Coffee, do you guys have a storefront or is it just a just? It's a- online right now. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we were gonna we were gonna pull a trigger. Um, in April, and then things yeah. got kind of kind of funny with the virus, so um, we just kind of held off on that. But uh, everything's online right now. But um, we're pretty excited because um, in about a year ago, uh, we had some coffee um, barreled up over that Bravery Brewery. It's a brewery in town, mm-hmm. and um, they had some. Uh, they put some of our coffee in, in some whiskey barrels, man. And they just released it about a month, about like what a few weeks ago. The the El Valiente. And it's oh, like yeah. a barrel aged, you know, a Baltic Porter. So it's, you know, it's really cool collaboration. Like our name is on the can itself. And this, like, you know, we're, like I said, we started from the ground up. So just seeing any kind of like advertisement or anything like in that nature is just, it, it, to me, it's shocking. And like, what was it two days ago? One of the homies, they sent me a bit, uh, a snap, Snapchat. And they're like, dude, what the fuck? You know, I didn't know. And then like, they're like walking in, in a, I guess, a pretty good liquor store where they had all these like local breweries. 
and they our beer was there so that kind of was kind of rewarding in a way like oh shit that's looking that's dope you know yeah that's awesome man <laughs> let's go I'm, now i'm kind of curious i'm kind of curious if i can try and i'll try and find try and snag a pack a six pack somewhere if i can order it and get it shipped or something that's really cool um and i think that's something that's kind of blown up too and i, I think people forget about coffee but i know like a lot of big craft brews and local breweries have been kind of been the thing recently a lot of people making them and collaborating with other local breweries and other companies but that's that's really cool, man. Like I, I would never even think of that as like a coffee company and a, and a brewery kind of j- jumping in it together. But um, yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty, we're pretty lucky out here. We got a lot of support from from all the local breweries. They all, you know, they all um, need coffee and they always reach out to us. So we appreciate the love, you know, especially like we live in Palmdale. You know, we roast in Palmdale, California. So a lot of the breweries out here they, they show us mad love, and you know, we're grateful. That's great, man. So have you, have you, um, I know you said that Los Santos, have you been able to visit Los Santos and, and actually check out the, um, uh, no, nah, man, that would be a blessing. Like on some woods, you know, at some narcos right there. Yeah. You know, that'd be badass pulling off like Pablo Escobar pulling off a plane. <laughs> I should grow a mustache and shit. Yeah. With some fucking beans. Like, uh, man. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that. man. Like that would be, that'd be badass. That's something we talked about. Like, dude, be, you know, we gotta go on vacation and, you know, just, we're so busy, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that, would, that would be awesome. I'm right there with you. It's kind of hard to hard to slow down to, to take time for yourself, especially when you're you're like you're just you're just grinding it in three different ways, man. Like just you know, radios, coffee, and then now you know, uh, sales to uh, radio, uh, um, not radios, uh, cable. So, like with that being said, as a whole, you have all three of them. How do you how do you balance those? How do you balance all that together? Because I mean, that's a that's a lot of work, man. You just, you know, yeah. obviously it's, it's the grind, obviously, but, but, you know, how do you balance that out with some people? Because there's just not as many. I can tell you now, there is, I would say, I'm not going to give, I won't give a percentage or number, but a lot of people, we'll leave it like that. A lot of fucking people aren't as motivated as you are by a long shot. Yeah. So, well, like, well, I'm, one of the reasons too is, you know, we were raised section eight. So we were like low income and just like, you know, I didn't like that shit, man. I didn't like, you know, like how my family kind of like depended, you know. Sure. And uh, I have, you know, two feet, two arms, you know, or it should have five arms, alien status. But, you know, I was like, no, I don't, that's not me, man. I wanted to break the cycle, you know, and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to break that cycle. And yeah, since I was young, like 17, 16, I was working already, you know, do, dishwasher and just, you know, just grinding where I could get it. And honestly, I have a son now. My life's changed drastically ever since i had a son he's he's 15 months old now and and this is just like doing the radios and staying up a few hours you know extra at night and it's just to put extra cheese on the cheeseburger you know that's that's it makes everything worthwhile that's great man that is that's, that's it's not easy yeah. it's not easy definitely it's not easy you know doing coffee and my main job and then now the radios and it's just like yeah you know it, it gets stressful but it is definitely rewarding and that's all that matters to me at the end of the day is it, it's rewarding. Absolutely. And that, um, that's, that's humbling. It really is. And I think a lot of people could to learn to, to hear that. So not everyone has it as lucky. And, um, I'm not going to say, I, I'm not going to say I had it poorly, but at the same time, I'm similar mindset. It's great to see stuff like that where people are able to just learn a skill, find something they enjoy, whether it's the radios or it's you actually doing the design work or putting your own paint and twist on it. And then additionally with the coffee and you're able to be successful with it. I think, I mean, I think that's the dream. That's the dream, man. You know, getting to get out of that. And like you said, breaking the cycle, which again, can't, doesn't get much better than that. Very cool. Yeah. I could definitely say I broke that cycle, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm blessed. You know, it's awesome, man. We'll definitely have, we'll have it all hooked up, all <laughs> set up and stuff like that and make sure all the links are available for everybody to check out your stuff. And then we'll have some more pictures as well. which speaking of like, that was like one of the things that caught my eye. I think, there was, and I think that's actually how we connected. And I was like, so I'll even give the background to this. So I see one picture that someone I follow posted radio. And then he had a scorpion mm. lollipop. And I was like, damn, I was like, man, that is aesthetic as fuck. Like that is a, that is, you know, fucking just awesome looking. And like everything came together and, um, you know, I shared it and I wanted to make sure that I tagged the guy cause I didn't want to get credit for it or make sure someone didn't think it was my radio and stuff. And yeah. I just happened to reach out. And, and then from there, I just kind of like, as they say, shoot, shoot your shot. And I'm thinking like, oh, this guy's not, he's be like, yeah, yeah fuck this, fuck this guy. This fucking, uh, whoever this is, <laughs> but, um, ended up just working out and you, you've probably been one of the, the nicest people just talking back and forth and discussing and getting stuff. Oh, set thank up you, man. And, you know, trying to help me out and, and hook me up. And uh, again, awesome stuff. 
we'll definitely link it up and, and make sure you get it. That being said, is, is there anything else out there that you're interested in doing or, or maybe getting involved in? You've got the radio, you've got the coffee, something else that, you know, you've wanted to get. You know, I just, uh, just, just trying to focus on being a good dad, man. That's, That's awesome. really, like I said, it's new to me and it's still like, it's super exciting, man. Yeah. And it's just, uh, I just want to be, I want to be a better dad and just have fun with it and just grow, man. Just really grow. But when it comes to like, you know, I, I have, you know, I have my own fishing. I used to have a fishing thing too. Like I'm still paying for the website, valleyhookers.com. You know, that was like anybody that has badass fishing pictures or like anything, send them to the Instagram Valley Hookers. You know, I'll, I'll fucking shoot you guys out. You know, so it's you know, pretty, pretty cool. But so you're big right now with the coffee, my main job, and now with the bail things, it's just, I'm just really just staying busy, man. Just riding the wave. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, we, we'll touch back and we'll just kind of wrap this, wrap that, that portion up. Um, so with the, with the fishing website and you actually have that. Are you a big fisherman? And like, you know, if so. Yeah, man. I like the last, uh, yeah, the last like about four years, I haven't fished as much, but when I was, you know, my 20, like, bro, I was like 27 to like 30. I was just fishing like a madman, like going before work in the morning, waking up at five in the morning just to be, you know, fish for two hours and get home and then, you know, get, get to work by nine in the morning. It was like addiction, man. That's it awesome. Was fucking, it was a problem. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's what was your favorite fish to catch, or like what was your target target fish most? Oh, largemouth bass for sure. Gotcha. That was something that um, that I, I learned on you know YouTube again. You know, I picked up you know the lures and stuff like that, and then I learned to catch bass, and that was so rewarding itself. And then something that to this day I can't take credit on. I still haven't caught a yellowtail. You know, I, I've probably been on like ten trips. Yeah. And I still haven't not caught a yellowtail. That bugs the shit out of me, but. <laughs> You know, I know it'll happen soon. I'm gonna say hopefully soon. You know, with everything kind of giving you the time, and time and day, and everything. Hopefully, hopefully you can get back on there and go and go get one. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So, with that being said, we kind of kind of tying stuff up a little bit, so it doesn't get too too rambled on. Um, is there anything coming up that you got in the works? Like I know I kind of said the, the like as another not necessarily as a job. But like where you got the coffee, you have the different flavors, but you have the radios. Is there a new product that you're going to be bringing out soon, or you have you do? Have uh, well, we just start. Yeah. So for Corvo, we just um, like I said, the El Valiente, a Bravery Brewery. Mm-hmm. If um, if anybody's in, in SoCal, grab that if they can. Sure. Um, but we started doing cold brew kits too now. So okay. Like awesome. you know, there's some people out there that don't like hot coffee. They like they rather have it just cold coffee. So now we're selling cold brew kits for ten bucks. Uh, makes a gallon of, of coffee, you know, you just brew it up for 24 hours and the next day you'll have some, some cold coffee and I, she'll keep her dick hard for like two weeks, man. She's strong. I don't, not for me. That cold brew coffee is not for me, man. That shit is too, too, too wickedly strong. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, but it is on your site though, the cold brew kit. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. 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 Well, I'm going to make sure it's, make sure yeah, it's Corvo. Dot coffee. Yep. Awesome. And then, so the cold brew kit and then all the different brands, all the flavors and stuff, not brands, but all the different flavors are on there as well. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. 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 So with Fang Bros, I know you said you, um, you hooked up with, you have to remind me, you say Merkit? Yeah. Merkit radio. Okay. Very so cool. these guys are, are the licensed distributors. So they, they show me love, man. They sent me all the bail, like a lot of bail Fang products. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, Merkit radio, these guys, they're really cool people, man. Very cool. Very really cool. nice. So, uh, with the market, you know, do they have any new products that you're going to be, be releasing on your, on your website soon? You can be able to, everyone um, to hopefully, just... um, I've, I've actually tried, I've been, um, testing out this one radio, the UV nine R mm-hmm. I believe that's what it was called. It's like the waterproof one. Very cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm not really like, I don't have access to the rivers and stuff like that, but when I did try it out, you know, it, it looked legit. I didn't leave the radio in the water for more than a minute to be honest, but I mean, threw it, threw it in there, picked it up and it worked and that was it for me. And you know? <laughs> I keep it yeah. pushing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in reality, you know, the water, water resistance kind of like a, that last resort where like if it accidentally falls, you know, I think I don't, it's kind of like cell phones, you know, technically a, a phone is like, you know, water resistant, but that doesn't mean you yeah. should go all damn deep sea diving with it, you know? So yeah. Leave it in the water while you don't scuba dive. Right. Right. So we'll wrap up the business's part. And again, that's all. That's really cool, man. Like it's, it's just, uh, again, it's really humbling seeing someone just do whatever it takes just to, find some new niche or something that they think is really cool and badass and then putting their twist on it and then selling it and then it obviously being you know 
popular and then it being productive and and just selling. So what do you like to do, you know, as a something outside of work? What's a what's a hobby or something that you like? Oh, dude, I have a lot of hobbies. Um, sure. So, you know, like I said, I'm, an, I'm a nerd, man. So I, I got my Pokemon cards, my magic cards. Oh, uh, yeah. I got my okay. I got my music. You know, I got my, my Fender. I got my Fender. Whew, that thing's a beauty right there. Just looking at me, you know, across the way. But, oh, yeah. um, you know, I play video games and stuff like Counter-Strike. You know, oh. I'm, I'm still on that, but definitely like magic cards and pogs. I still, I still got my pogs laying around. Hell yeah, man. Let's see. And like, just like that, you know, <laughs> just like that, my, my interest is Pete now. So funny that you said, I think you're like the first person I ever talked to that's, that's told me they played Magic the Gathering. I used to play Magic the Gathering too. Oh, that's fucking funny. Magic Gathering yeah. is so dope, man. Still, I haven't, I haven't been playing it in a while, but same, it's, I, I still got all my, I still got my, my, you know, my creatures laying around. Hell yeah, man. Same. I'm going to say the exact same thing. I think I have a whole... I think I have a whole box like a stored up somewhere. I got some like the OG, some like the OG stuff. Like I found out some of those. Oh, uh, and you're are, a wizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I am a <laughs> fucking wizard, bro. Uh, I found out some of those are actually worth a decent amount of money. Like I was remember looking at some of them and I was like, damn, that's how, fucking worth how much now? Just kind of crazy looking back on oh, something. Man. But yeah, the Magic the Gathering, man, that was my thing. At, like in. Uh, like 2008 through 2011 or so like that i spent way too much money on fucking cards but it was it was cool. yeah man i i haven't bought in a new deck in a while but like i said i'll still i still got this little zombie deck that i, that I created oh. and i usually like likes to whip ass oh uh, uh, don't even get me started but no fucking zombie deck man come on bro just, oh, yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i hate them like the most annoying parasite decks oh the yeah, they're Damn, fucking they're hideous to look at too. And <laughs> they're just so shit, they're man. so annoying, bro. They're so annoying. And that's the cool thing about magic. And that's the cool thing about magic is that you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, use your imagination too. You know. Yeah, you're mix right. mix the, the elements and just fucking go hard on it. Yeah, you're right, dude. And it's funny that you say that because like they they've added like their own thing. Like I think I kind of got out of it when they started introducing the uh, planeswalkers, and some of my friends were like, you know, either going. Up oh yeah, see, that's where I kind of got out of it too. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty cool. They do have like uh, games you can play. To, that's sick. It's that way you don't have to spend the money on the on the damn cards themselves. But at least you can have like the, the actual video game where it's like, you know, imitating it. And you can still play with because like, that's my problem. I don't really have anyone to play with. So that's something I've considered. Yeah, you gotta tell your you gotta tell your friends to fucking get their head out of their ass and start playing again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, dude. So and I, I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up. So you said CS:GO um does that mean that you're a pc gamer or are you playing on consoles uh, i used to when i was younger man I, I, was, I was putting in like 40 hours a week on that thing that was on my win yeah, that was on my windows and then i had it on my mac but i think like with the latest update they knocked it off or yeah maybe one of the newer like, newer, newer models newer app you know updates i know sometimes like the doesn't agree with each other on the code and stuff like that on steam and, and all that stuff so um with PC and stuff like that and CSGO, do you play any games like on console still? Yeah, I still have, I'm still a gamer by heart, so I still have the Switch, the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, I'm sorry, I just don't have time to play it as much. Yeah, I got you. But like, like I said, the po all the Pokemon games, I still rock with those. Hell yeah. Um, I just got the Call of Juarez, so it's like, uh, bring, you know, shooting in like Lincoln County with Billy the Kids, so that's, that's pretty yeah. fucking gnarly. And then, uh, my brother right now, he, he's playing this game called um, Ghost, on the PS4? Yeah, man. Ghost of, uh, well, I was just talking to, about a buddy, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. It looks pretty cool. I uh, yeah. cool. Dude, I recommended it to him. I was like, bro, I heard this game is hot right now. Fucking check it out. And this motherfucker has been like on this shit for like the last <laughs> week or two. And he's like, he's like, oh, man, this game is one of the fucking best games I've played in a while. I was like, dude, it looks fucking insane. Nose, nose to the grindstone. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. And I'll, I'll, I'll ask one more question and then uh, we'll wrap it up here. But uh, new consoles are coming out. Obviously, in in my in my eye view, in my, in my perspective, it seems PlayStation Four kind of won it last go around. But you know, it's always a thing with cross you know cross play and stuff like that. Well, the the victor always gets to write the history. You know, originally it was PlayStation who was kind of open to cross play, and my and Xbox with Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty said, "No, nah, no, nah, we're not fucking doing that." And now the shoes have switched. Moving forward, it seems like it's inevitable to be more crossplay stuff. That being said, being rambling on, but what is the new console that you are most excited for? Do you think that the PlayStation Five is the way to go, or do you think the new Xbox is is where it's going to be at, or do you think they're about the same? You know, man, I haven't done fucking like the research on it from like when the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty was out. Mm -hmm. 
and those those days i was like knowing the specs and everything and i haven't even like really looked at the new specs i, I hope the i hope the ps5 can play back the old fucking the sony games right. that would be bitching i mean honestly that I'd, I'd, I'd probably even buy the, the playstation if that's the case um but i don't know if you heard or if this was bullshit but i heard that sega's coming out with a new console too really no i hadn't heard that so, well, yeah it, yeah, so I don't know if that's real or not, but like a couple of my buddies sent me articles and it, and it looked legit from what I saw. I mean, I hope that's what it is because the Sega Dreamcast was fucking fun, man. <laughs> it was. I remember it's, it's been a while. Like I, I kind of almost forget about it, to be honest, sometimes. But yeah. Oh, man, you got to get yourself a Dreamcast and just fucking plug it in. Man. I still got mine laying around here somewhere. Yeah, I used to have one of the like the original Super Nintendos and my mom accidentally sold it at like a like a garage sale or something. And I had no idea. No, uh, someone got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Someone got a nice fucking, uh, super Nintendo for next to nothing compared to what it's, what it costs now. Damn. But yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Like with the switch and stuff too. Uh, my, we've got one of those as well, but it's, um, my wife pretty much I'll, I'll confiscate it for my wife and I'll play the hell out of like Pokemon for a little bit. And then I'll go balls to the wall doing like battles and stuff like that. And like all the number systems and stuff like that. But I get yeah, out. it's so fun, yeah, man. I get burned out, and then I'll let her let her have it back because it is technically hers, though. That's awesome. Man. <laughs> That's great to hear. It seems like you just you're just kind of like all over the place. You kind of kind of remind me of myself where hobbies wise, you just have different passions all over the place. But... Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I you know I, I like to do all this. I like to do a bunch of shit, man. Just keeps me busy, keeps me focused. I, I can't just be there not doing anything. I have to stay busy. Absolutely. I think that keeps you honest too, and that kind of keeps you on your toes so you don't lose your edge. That's great. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's great. So I'll wrap it up. Anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to throw out there one last time before we before we shut this back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely for support and motivation. And when it comes to like, this whole social media thing, I want to shout out to uh, the big homie Hobo Tactical, um, the Sleep of Reason 88. Um, cool. Check him out. He makes some dope-ass art. His, his necklaces are mad wicked. Um, Hellabus, shout out, you know, to Southwest Radio Comms, obviously, shout out to Mercate Radio, um, GLG Knives, what's up, you know, what's up, homie, and then, you know, that's about it, man, and I appreciate everything, Max, you're a solid cat, man. Hey, man, uh, likewise, brother, I I appreciate you, one, taking the time to stop what you're doing and message me back, emailing and, and going and offering all this stuff, and then on top of that, you know, taking the time of day from your busy life to chat with me and getting this scheduled up and discussing all this stuff with me and breaking it down. Cause a lot of this stuff, again, is, is really new to me. Yeah, man, it's fun. Yeah. It's all, it's all fun, yeah. man. I, I like, I, I, I like to keep it fun, man. Yep. Absolutely. So, you know, again, I thank you for coming on. Thank you for jumping on. Cause you even had to just, you even had to download discord and get everything set up. So you even went out of your way above that. But again, it's, it's awesome. It's great. I, you know, I don't know what it is. It's just kind of cool. I was I was really excited about having someone who was pretty much from the other side of the country who, you know, it's something that's just completely new to me because uh, most most of the time, most of the topics, I have a general idea or I kind of know it, know the market a little bit. But with, you know, something that's, you know, it's I'm completely green. So it's really cool getting someone on and, and distributing some facts and giving out the info and, and hopefully if... Yeah, man, I always, I always take the time out of my day to answer, you know, every question. You know, that's just the way... It's the way I am, man. You got to be kind. You got to be kind to people, Absolutely. you know, especially in this. I don't like, I've been, I've been ignored so many times by people when I, when I hit them up and I don't want to be that person, you know? Yeah. You're a good dude, man. You're a good dude. So I'm going to make sure that when we will have this, this episode posted, we'll have all the links for everyone discussed and all the tags, and all the shout outs. We'll have it tagged in there as well. And then we'll have the blog post with all the links so everyone can catch up and go check them out, go check everything out. And we'll get it all distributed. And of course, we'll have the Corvo Coffee Master himself and the Fang Bros. We'll have it all linked. So when you need your radio, your Bao Fang, you know who to go. So you don't have to deal with fucking Amazon and uh, that bad yeah. rich bastard who already has too much money on Amazon. Go uh, Bezos. Go 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 check out my boy. <laughs> and get some. And, and then get I appreciate some, that. Man. Absolutely. And stop fucking shopping at Starbucks. It's overrated. And go get some Corvo Coffee. I'm excited. Yeah, get some fresh shit. Yeah. I'm, I probably don't even, you know, it's probably, that's probably the reason why I probably haven't had any good coffee and that's probably why I don't want coffee. So we'll definitely, I'm, I'm pumped to, pumped to try, right it. On, man. try it, man. And I'll definitely get some more and I'll, uh, we'll make sure, but like, yeah, it's kind of, it, it's crazy. So even like listenership, um, I would say more than, more than half the people that listen to are actually not even on the East coast. They're actually West coast. Uh, a good percentage of them are actually in California and then some are like right on the, 
right in Arizona, Utah, and stuff like that. So they're not too too far. So hopefully, fucking dope. I'll get you. Hopefully, some guys will will give an order to you and, and shout out and get it going. Especially with someone who's got that yeah, man, it'll be fun nose to the grindstone mentality. All right, man. Thank you so much, Aaron, for coming on. I really appreciate it. And we'll get it. Thanks, up. Max. You have an awesome awesome weekend, man. It's Friday. Happy Friday, Hell man. Yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Go. Go, go fucking open up. Uh, what's your favorite beer? What's your favorite beer real quick? Uh, I'm a pothead, dude. I don't fucking like to drink beer, but I mean, I'll fucking crack open a fucking a Modelo or a fucking, a, fucking a Paps beer or something, whatever I can find. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. I'll, I'll pack a bowl. I'll pack a bowl, though. I'm just like, so excited. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's awesome, man. All right, brother. Thanks. Yeah, for- I can't fake the funk, man. I don't like the beer. The beer, I'll just pass. <laughs> I gotcha. All right, man. You have a nice one. Have a great weekend. Thanks for coming on. Everyone, check it all out. We'll have it linked. That's it, brother. And that concludes episode eight with Aaron from Corvo Coffee and Fang Bros. Hard working man, hardest working man in the room. But uh, check him out on Instagram. Check out his pages Corvo Coffee, C O R V O Coffee, and Fang, F E N G Bros. Check him out. Buy some stuff. Stop buying Starbucks overrated coffee. You're paying too much. Go get some Corvo Coffee. Get some good shit. If you want a new radio, if you're looking at Fang, uh, Fang Radios, go check out Fang Bros. Get your little custom setup. All right, I'll have links to everything on the blog, the webs on the post, and of course the story. My website, CircleCraft, C I R C A K R A F T dot com. And of course, Instagram is the same, C I R C A K R A F T. Give us, give us, as in me, give me a follow. Check it out. Check out the upcoming drops upcoming episodes, co-hosts, and all of the cool content. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay safe. Adios.